With the release of Gun Interactive and Sumo Notagum's The Texas Chainsaw Massacre video game, the beloved horror franchise has found itself back in the spotlight in a major way. While the game itself is winning plentiful plaudits from fans and critics alike, the Texas Chainsaw movies are certainly more of a mixed bag. Some of those films are great, some of those films are passable, and some of those films are absolute stinkers. With that in mind, I'm Andrew from What Culture Horror, and here's every Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie ranked worst to best. Number 9. Leatherface When the Texas Chainsaw franchise is bad, it is awful. And it's hard to look past 2017's Leatherface as being the biggest turd of the bunch. For some horror characters, less is more when it comes to backstory. After all, part of the appeal of these figures stems from the mystique behind them. And part of the reason the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre was great was down to how you knew nothing about the Sawyer family. Having already dug into Leatherface's past with 2006's Texas Chainsaw Massacre at the beginning, the past was again revisited with this 2017 picture. The picture which serves as a prequel to the original movie and 2013's Texas Chainsaw 3D. This prequel opens with a young Thomas Sawyer luring a couple to their death at the hands of his family. Locked up in the Gorman House Youth Reformery, Thomas has his name changed as the action jumps ahead 10 years. From here, there's a whodunit element to Leatherface, as the audience is left to decipher which of the troubled youths is indeed really Tommy Sawyer. Unfortunately, any horror fan worth their salt could immediately tell who was the real Leatherface in waiting, and not even a valiant turn from genre fan Lily Taylor could stop this from being utter trash. Number 8. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2022 Full disclosure, last year's Texas Chainsaw Massacre was going to be ranked at the very bottom of this list. Then the memory of the fun bus set sequence where Leatherface carved his way through a slew of pretty young things came to mind, and that one scene alone is enough to rank TCM 2022 above the Leatherface prequel. In this most recent Texas Chainsaw offering, those pretty young things head out into Harlow, Texas as part of a plan to buy up properties in order to build the area up as a cool and hip area. Yes, a message of gentrification is at the core of this picture, but that message gets lost in a muddled mess of a movie. Of course, one of these properties is a broken down orphanage owned by an old lady. And when some of these young pricks argue that the lady doesn't actually own the property, she has a heart attack and dies. And it's then revealed that an 80 year old Leatherface actually lives at this orphanage. And thus, the franchise's main villain embarks on a bloody mission of revenge. Even though this straight to Netflix film brought back original survivor Sally Hardesty, the film forever remained utterly dull. Well, for that bus sequence, that was pretty decent like. Number Number 7. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Beginning Serving as a prequel to Marcus Nispel's 2003 Texas Chainsaw reboot, The Beginning, much like Leatherface, makes the bold decision to flesh out the backstory of our chainsaw-loving killer. As in, we literally get to see the birth of the child who will go on to become Leatherface. As The Beginning opens, we find a young woman dying during premature childbirth in a Texas slaughterhouse where she works. That baby is rudely dumped in the trash by the woman's supervisor, but is discovered and raised as her own by Luda May Hewitt. With the Sawyer name swapped out for Hewitt in this continuity, that boy becomes Thomas Hewitt, aka Leatherface. We then jump ahead 30 years to the adult Thomas working in that same slaughterhouse under the same supervisor, and when the slaughterhouse is forced to close, Thomas butchers his boss and we're off to the races as Leatherface comes to the fore, as he and his family end up targeting two Vietnam War enlistees and their girlfriends. Sadly, the beginning brings nothing really new to the table. It relies too much on gore rather than trying to craft genuine in dread and scares, and it stupidly looks to delve into what made Leatherface who he is. Still, there's a final sequence where we think Jordana Brewster's Chrissy has escaped in the car, only to have Leatherface pop up in the back seat. That is a belter. Number 6. Texas Chainsaw 3D The initial setup of 2013's Texas Chainsaw 3D is admittedly quite an intriguing one. Here, we pick things up decades after the original film, with Alexandra Daddario's Heather inheriting a luxurious home from a grandmother she didn't know existed. Unbeknownst to Heather, she's originally a member of the Sawyer family and was adopted when she was just a baby. We see Heather and her friends head to Texas to check out her new property, only for it soon to become apparent that Leatherface resides in the basement. You see, the opening of Texas Chainsaw 3D shows a flashback from directly after the events of the first film. A flashback which sees a mob descend upon the Sawyer family home and burn it and its inhabitants to the ground. Heather, who is actually Edith Sawyer, was rescued and adopted from the child aftermath of this fiery assault, but she was believed to be the only survivor. And then there's Leatherface, of course. One of the biggest bugbears of this movie, though, is it is somewhat got revisionist history. As in, when we pick things up immediately after Toby Hooper's Texas Chainsaw Massacre, there's a bunch of additional unnamed Sawyer family members living at the home. Of course, these are merely there to add to the body count of that initial fire, but it's just a bit daft. Where were they before? Also, it's a little jarring to see how quickly Heather flips a switch and becomes her own deranged maniac simply because she learned about her family history. Number 5. Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Next. 
Next Generation. Hope was high that the return of Kim Hankel for Texas Chainsaw Massacre The Next Generation would wield a positive result. Hankel co-wrote the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre with Toby Hooper, and so him picking up writing and directing duties on TCM4 certainly increased anticipation. Unfortunately, 1995's The Next Generation, also known as The Return of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, is viewed by many as being the point where the wheels really came off for the franchise. Famous for featuring Matthew McConaughey and Renee Zellweger in early roles, that's sadly about all that's noteworthy about The Next Generation. The film attempted to breathe new life into the property, but the end result ultimately stripped back so much of what had made previous Texas Chainsaw movies work so well. In particular, TCM4 keeps Leatherface on the sidelines for far too long, with McConaughey's Vilma stealing so much of the villainous spotlight as he terrorizes some generic teens on prom night. Despite the hope of a return to form, the next generation effectively killed the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise, before Marcus Nispel rebooted things eight years later. Number 4. Leatherface – The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 when looked at the nine Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies so far, Leatherface The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 is the film that's most like a full-on slasher movie, and likewise, this is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre picture which presents Leatherface as most like a full-on slasher villain, a la Michael Myers or Jason Voorhees. Famously, this is a film that was butchered in the editing suite, with countless cuts being made in order to get the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 rated for release, including removing over four minutes of gore, which results in a movie that feels tepid and rather dull when it comes to its kills. Here, car trouble throws a couple directly into the line of the Sawyer family, with that sinister clan stalking this couple and the ever-great Ken Foray through the back roads of Texas. It's all very formulaic and it's all, frankly, very indicative of where the horror genre was in 1990, but there's just enough here to rank Leatherface above the next generation. Also, much like the next generation featured a before they were famous McConaughey and Zellweger, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 has a pre-fame Viggo Mortensen as Ed Sawyer, although he's burned alive in the film's final act, so not great for Viggo. Number 3. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2003 Just hearing the word remake, reboot, requel, reimagining, or re-imaging is enough to send a shiver down the spine of many a horror hound. While many were expecting to be disappointed by Marcus Nispel's 2003 Texas Chainsaw Massacre reboot though, this film was surprisingly solid. Sure, it was an impossible task to live up to Toby Hooper's 1974 movie, but Nispel's feature stands as one of the better do-overs of the past 20 years. There was a smidge too much gore for some, but Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2003 managed to nicely pay tribute to the original movie while bringing something a little different to the table. And in terms of that different, this reboot also stood out from a lot of its contemporaries for the fact that it invoked a darker, grimier feel at a time when, frankly, a lot of horror movies were more vibrant in terms of their colour tones and palettes. With a nice take on the classic Leatherface look, some expert scenery cheering from Art Lee Ermey, and a strong performance from central protagonist Jessica Biel, this reboot was far better than anyone expected. Seriously, it's really good. Number 2. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 2. Released eight years after the original film, Toby Hooper's The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 took elements of its predecessor and mixed in plentiful drops of black comedy. Yes, this was a terrifying movie when it was required to be, but there was a greater sense of fun and humour at other times. From the get-go, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 sets its stall out majestically, with a couple of cocksure, annoying college kids chased down the highway by a chainsaw-wielding Leatherface. That sequence nicely introduces us to Stretch, a DJ who these idiots are making prank calls to, and someone who is soon made to report on a chilly cook off. And that chilly cook off, it's won by Drayton Sawyer, and he gives a knowing wink to the audience for its attention to prime meat. As in, you know, he's made the chili out of human flesh, and it tastes great, apparently. We've also got Dennis Hopper here as Lieutenant Lefty Enright, the uncle of the first movie, Sally and Franklin Hardesty. There's also Bill Mosley as Chop Top, a Sawyer family member who's become the second most popular character in the entire franchise, and there's just a general sense of playfulness here about Leatherface this time out. Obviously, of course, while still being a total murderous menace. Number one, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. 1974. Of course, Toby Hooper's 1974 Texas Chainsaw Massacre was going to nab the top spot on this list. Hooper's 74 picture is not just a seminal piece of horror cinema, but a film that changed the face of cinema, period. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre was a movie the likes of which had never been seen before. To say this was and is an assault on the senses would be a major understatement, with the colour palette, the score, the camera cuts and imagery all adding to an intense story centred around a group of stranded young adults who run afoul of the twist family. What makes this inaugural film even more impressive is there's largely a distinct lack of gore. Upon a first watch, you may think you've seen all the extreme, ooey-gooey acts of Leatherface and his family, but in reality, very little of the brutality of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is shown on screen, with so much of that being left up to the audience's imagination. 
a classic of its time that still holds up magnificently nearly 50 years after its release, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a true all-timer of a movie. So that's every Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie ranked worst to best. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let us know your rankings in the comments. And be sure to like, subscribe, share, turn those notification bells on, and come and give us a follow on X at What Culture Horror. By there, you can find myself at Culture Left Peg. Most importantly, though, be sure to have the best possible day. Whether you're doing something or whether you're doing absolutely nothing, I hope it goes well for you. And if things aren't going so well, I really, really do hope things turn around as soon as possible. I've been Andrew Pollard from What Culture Horror, and I'll catch you down the road.